Яблоко. Ну при чем тут яблоко, Лена? А давай его еще усыпим, как кота. Антон, я прошу Что тебя. Что перегибай? Кабачки, огонь. Ой, Антоша, в этот раз что-то не очень получилось. А я в прошлый раз делала баклажан. Это уже, знаете ли, вкусно. Асенька, а ты еще ходишь на танцы? Энтони Бордейн always reminds us there's a universality of eating. No matter what culture you're from, you have to eat. And therefore, sharing food with family is something that's common to everybody on the entire planet. And we can all relate to that on some level. Yeah, my, uh, my feeling was it was excellent. Uh, the one part I found a little unbelievable was the sudden transition of the grandpa from a total curmudgeon to now he's a soft-spoken human. And I couldn't quite get that, but, you know, I could see that there's more behind it, maybe a feature film. My hypothesis, and I would love to hear if anybody else disagrees with me or does agree with me. Oh, I see your hand. Because I think he knew. I, th I think he knew. Maybe he hadn't been told directly, but I, I think he knew his, his number, his ticket was coming up. And he had one moment to make peace with it. He, oh, he didn't quite hit the mark, but he tried to hit the mark. And sometimes not hitting the mark is the more human of the thing to do. I think what came across the most was the, uh, the aspect of context, right? So we see a guy who, by any stretch of the imagination, is a, is a banker, but when you take him out of that scene and you bring him into his family context and you see what he deals with at home. He's emotional, he's angry, etc. And similar thing with his, his mother who has children who don't agree with her, her dad, but it's her father. Her, in her, her frame of reference, her context is, that's my father, that's someone I love. The same way you, the son relates to the father and the mother, her context is, that's someone she loves. For whatever reason, he has his issues. And similar thing with the grandfather that towards the end when we saw the letter It gave us a lot more insight into his context, right? So the fact that he even sent the the writings to be assessed by somebody else uh, says a lot about him. Without that nuance that gave us an aspect or context of who he was, we wouldn't really understand. And what it does, it just shows the complexity of all the characters. So we see people at face value, but ultimately their context, as they say, his context is for kings. There's this generation of um, uh, trauma that's passed down and this notion of like, don't waste your life chasing dreams, it didn't work for me. Um, so you can really divulge. You don't get to, get to in a short film, maybe a feature. Coming from that background, I totally get what's going on in the family. Uh, the grandfather is trying to express his love in a weird way that the grandkids just don't get it. And uh, the grandfather did know that he's going to die, and I think it was just, he was trying to protect their grandkids. It's it just the expression of his love, maybe rude, and, uh, but the fact that he read this letter, it showed why he was so against uh, the writing of his grandma and grandson. Mm -hmm. so just, just love. I agree with a couple of the comments here of one of the Chekhov uh, story. There's so much depth and so much going on in all of, in the story, like the Chekhov story. Okay, and then <clears throat> I agree that there was this moment when the father 
suddenly reveals himself as being more human and, and more generous of spirit than he actually has ever appeared in his life. But then the ending, uh, you would think somehow now that's going to change the sun. We went in the opposite direction. I sort of felt that the son was going to become the father. And I, or I guess you're not in your head. I thought I was the only one who was thinking that. But no, but uh, if that's what was intended, it worked for me. Yeah. I thought, and I'd love to get some other people's responses to this, but I was like, well, look at that. He's going to step into the shoes that are being emptied. And it's going to be sad and depressing, but this is the way the cycle will happen, right? That's kind of what I, what I saw. But also at the same time, you have this sister who's beaten the odds to get into this incredibly uh, high profile program that still might not save her future. She might still have to struggle to make it work. She might have to wait tables. She might not get any work after she becomes a dancer. But she's following the dream. And is he just jealous? Is he just angry? Is he is he fraught with uh, with one person like I can make it I can get you a job at my bank we can we can make a good life for ourselves we don't have to waste our, our lives running after something that we might never get let's be practical let's be useful but you're still going off and running your dreams fine take the car leave without me I'm just gonna smoke and drink on this bench well I saw him as also having maybe had his opinion changed by his grandfather with the articles that are never getting public. I mean, you know, he offers to send them in and his grandfather's like, well, you know, nothing's ever going to happen and, you know, maybe persuading him of the fruitlessness of this pursuit and now he's turned him. And, and there is a brilliant comment made about, you know, this is, my, this is the manifestation of my love. I'm trying to protect you from the world that's going to break your heart. Don't dream too big. Just stay safe. Do something practical. Uh, don't, yeah, don't, don't fill your head with fancies, right? And you've got one kid who's doing it despite the odds, where come what may, and one kid who's not. Well, for better or for worse, is choosing a different path, path and sweeping those dreams under the table for something else, right? And we don't, we are left unsure of who's going to come out better in the end. But it's still a family, and that's what families are built of.